uh, on our website in the next couple of days. If you do have any questions that crop up, if you could hold on to those and then put them in the chat after the presentation, uh, I'm sure uh, Ian will do his best to answer anything you're uncertain about. Other than that, I think that's everything. So I'll pass you on over to Ian to discuss uh, the uh, academic route into policing. Thanks ever so much. OK, thank you very much, Paul, for the uh, introduction. So good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be addressing you this afternoon on the last leg of this careers fest. Um, and I'll try and make it as interesting as possible and whet your appetite for what policing is all about. So my name is Ian Ackerley and I'm a senior lecturer and course leader at Staffordshire University. Uh, and this is my second career because for 34 years I was a police officer in Staffordshire Police and then latterly in Nottinghamshire Police. And when I joined uh, all the way back in 1978 as a police cadet, uh, then I didn't really need any qualifications at all. I certainly didn't need a degree. In fact, at that point, I didn't know anybody who was going to university and who was likely to get a, a degree. My father had been a police officer for 25 years, starting in 1957, and it seemed a natural progression for me to go into the into the police force. So I joined the police cadets and then worked my way um, through, took my promotion exams from sergeant to inspector and eventually finished as assistant chief constable in Nottinghamshire Police. Uh, and had all sorts of responsibilities around firearms and chemical, biological and radioactive terrorism and so on and so forth. So it's a really stimulating and fantastic career. Uh, but things always change and the routes into policing now have changed dramatically. So today I'm going to talk to you about your future career, why maybe you would want to consider studying policing and also of what you should look out for in your policing degree and I think it's really important that as uh, potential police officers of the future when you're thinking of studying that you look around and look what's on offer because this is a big investment not only financially but also uh, intellectually and emotionally uh, in terms of your future career and your future life. So what kind of careers do our students, for example, go on to, to do? So many of them go into being a police constable, so they're joining as a uniformed officer who uh, often is walking around the streets or driving around, responding to incidents uh, and providing that immediate safety. There is a route into policing now going straight in as a detective constable, and I'm very proud of one of our former students who's just become the first uh, detective constable straight into the force as a detective constable um, in Staffordshire. So that's the route that is attracting many of our students at the moment. But then we've had students who, uh, for one reason or another, decided that they didn't want to be a sworn police officer and entered the service as a police staff investigator. So one of uh, my former students is working in the CID at Hanley as a police staff investigator. But there are other careers around criminal justice work, uh, as a fraud investigator, financial investigator is becoming very popular and um, working as a border force officer. But from the kind of degrees around policing, we have students who go into the security services, into MI5, MI6, uh, who join the National Crime Agency. We have students who go into private practice with insurance companies as investigators, post-accident, post-incident type of investigators. And one of our students last year joined a tech company who receive computers from the police uh, that they've seized from potential suspects uh, and she's analysing those computers for evidence of child sexual abuse. So it would be misleading to say that if you think of a um, if you think of a degree in policing as only giving you the opportunity of going into the police, it opens up many, many different varieties. So being a police officer is a fantastic and rewarding career. I've had um, every single day that I was a police officer, never disappointed. Of course, there are highs and lows and there are challenges, but being able to offer a service to protect people, to be proactive and for it to be varied is something really special. And when I was thinking of joining, my dad said to me, and this is a great career because no two days are the same. Even if you go to the same incident, the people will be different and their needs will be different. And that was such a important piece of advice because, you know, probably 30 plus years later when I uh, was on the cusp of becoming an assistant chief constable, I had to start thinking about the vision for a particular police force. 
And this is the vision that I brought forward around tailoring the service to meet the individual needs, which fits right in with the sort of diverse communities that people police, because the concept of treating everyone the same is an important concept. But to do that, often you have to treat people differently. So it's varied and challenging. And you know, some people decide to stay as a uniformed officer for all their service. Others decide to specialise uh, and uh, work their way through, sometimes into terrorism, sometimes into the CID, maybe into roads policing. And there's this wealth of career opportunities that you can make a difference. And I've put on here about risk management. And the importance of risk management is this, that too often people think that they can eliminate risk and you can't. You can only manage risk where you're happy to have it. And a very good example was a um, double fatal shooting that happened in Berkshire some uh, years ago at a place called Highmore Cross. It was a barbecue uh, that a family were having at a, quite a big house there around the swimming pool and a former estranged uh, partner broke in, uh, shot his ex-partner dead, also shot somebody else who died and then shot the mother of his ex-partner. And the police, in trying to eliminate the risk of moving forward, um, decided that they would go to a rendezvous point, they amass their resources, uh, evaluate all opportunities and the uh, attempt to alleviate the risk. But in so doing, created a greater risk. And I want you to sort of bear that in mind now with the response of the service in the 21st century when you think of uh, the Borough Market uh, terrorist attack where three terrorists on the loose uh, shooting uh, weapons, uh, people are panicking and from the time that the police got the call in the control room in the Metropolitan Police to the time that the armed officers attended and had shot dead the suspects was seven minutes. Now that's quite astonishing, uh, quite an astonishing change. And it kind of typifies the way that the service is moving forward and the way and uh, reasons why recruitment is changing. And I'm going to talk to you about how uh, the police recruitment has changed. But before that, I'm going to talk about something called the Police Education Qualifications Framework. So this isn't just about now routes into the police, although it encompasses that. It looks at the education qualifications that are required throughout the whole service because when the police talk about professionalising the, ser the service, they're not really saying that we're not professional at the moment. They're saying they want to put it onto a professional footing in the same way that accountancy or um, the law or medicine is, where there is a degree entry requirement, there's a register of people who practise, uh, and this therefore becomes a professional uh, occupation rather than, I suppose, how it's been seen in the past as a blue collar uh, occupation. So if you look at this particular graphic that I've got here, starts in the top left, I suppose, about 11 o'clock with the PCSO, the Police Community Support Officer. And the education level there is level four. So effectively, the first year at university via a PCSO apprenticeship. And I know that some of you have received a talk previously about the Police Constable degree apprenticeship. So I'm not going to talk unduly about that, but I have to mention it as we go through, otherwise it won't make sense. And then at sort of 12 o'clock to three o'clock, we've got the Police Constable Degree Apprenticeship, which you know about, um, and the Graduate Entry Programme and the Pre-Join Professional Policing Degree. So today I'm going to talk about the two areas in white uh, as your route into policing if you decide to study uh, a policing degree or any other degree for that matter at university. Uh, but because the service is looking now to um, put education all the way through the service, right up to the chief uh, officer ranks, um, from three o'clock down to about 25 past, you can see here the team leader, the sergeant, and uh, needing uh, a kind of higher level apprenticeship or a formal uh, qualification. Um, at manager expert level, we're talking about 60 credits. Uh, at level seven. So level seven is postgraduate level, uh, 60 credits is uh, 600 hours of study. Um, and as a consequence, the inspector, chief inspector expert level are looking at that. At superintendent, chief superintendent level, it's a full masters. And also they're looking at apprenticeships that will uh, enable people to enter the service at that level. 
And then at the um, chief officer ranks, as you can see uh, here, if I move my cursor here is assistant chief constable, here's deputy chief constable and here's chief constable. And they're looking at full level seven qualifications. But studying for your degree isn't sufficient these days because even when you've got your degree, you're going to need to go through a selection process. And that selection process will be based upon something called the competency value framework. So when you move out of college and into university, you need to start thinking about your employability virtually from the day that you walk into the university. And in policing terms, they've changed the core competencies and they've clustered them around four values, as you can see in the middle, transparency, impartiality, integrity and public service. They're then under, underpinning that are six um, core competencies of being emotionally aware, taking ownership, being collaborative, i.e. working with others, delivering, supporting and inspiring, analysing critically, which is a really important part of your degree education because the service wants to work on an evidence based um, principle so that we find evidence based solutions so that we don't waste resource and we bring about solutions that improve people's lives and that we're innovative and open minded. And they've clustered those into the three groups of being resolute, compassionate and committed, inclusive, enabling and having visionary leadership and of being intelligent, creative and informed policing. So one of the important things wherever you decide to study is that from the very beginning of your level four programme, you start thinking about how you develop these competences thinking about the behavioural statements. And if you go onto the internet, you can download the competency value framework. It will tell you what the behavioural statements are. What I would suggest is that you create a spreadsheet for each one of the competencies and that you start then to put the behavioural statements um, down underneath that. And then across the top, put your examples and grade yourself from zero to five so that you can really test whether you've got any gaps in those competencies. So that whilst you're at university, you can start thinking about what else you need to do in terms of volunteering, extracurricular activities, part time jobs to fill those um, gaps, because this is a competitive market. And what I want you to do is to walk out of a university with the best degree that you can get, but also with strong competency evidence so that you can go in and be a strong contender in the selection process. So when you're choosing your university, um, if you're thinking about a policing degree, then start thinking about the types of skills, not only the academic skills and the research skills are absolutely pivotal, but look at also for your course what operational skills they're offering. So are they offering sort of good digital skills, such as, as you can see in the bottom right, the drone technology? Or are they operating with good forensics, as you can see in the top two, the middle at uh, the top and the top right? Um, do you get the opportunity to use body worn videos or practice giving evidence at court and being cross examined, as you can see in the bottom left? So all very important aspects of your degree education, because not all vocational degrees are the same. And also look for what partnerships uh, might be available whilst you're working through your three year programme, because not only do you need to get the degree, but you need to develop those competencies. So look out for partnerships and a, a good one that we have is with the Staff with Staffordshire Police around the forensic partnership that's won awards. We're also tied up and have been to the Czech Republic with the Police Academy there and students have gone over to study. Uh, look out for those volunteering opportunities because there'll be a rich vein of um, developing your core competencies and putting those into your examples, putting them into your framework. So good education, good degree, good competencies. So maybe volunteering for the, with a special constabulary. We have something called the cop shop at uh, Stash University. We have a dedicated constable who runs a cop shop and our students volunteer and staff that that particular cop shop. Whichever university you go to, think about how you can engage with helping on open days, uh, linking in with sort of visits by the vice chancellor or by uh, others, working on open days, on offer holder days, sharing your knowledge so that you're starting to develop that portfolio because your task really at university is to have a great time, but it's also to get a great education, to develop the competencies so that you can differentiate yourself 
from the crowd so that when you walk into that selection process you go in thinking if there's only one job I'm having it because I've developed myself so well. Think about volunteering with the Samaritans or with other charities. There's lots of opportunities out there to develop your CV, your competencies to make you the best prospect when you go into the workplace. So routes into policing. Uh, you can apply to a police force and if you don't have a degree then you'll go down the police apprenticeship route and I know that Beth spoke to uh, some of you at least about the police apprenticeship route so I'm not going to talk about that. If you have a degree, so say you have a policing degree or policing and criminal investigation degree, the degree that I lead at Staffs University, then you do a graduate diploma two year top up. This is called the uh, degree holder entry programme or DHEP for short. It's akin to what people know as the PGCE in teaching. So for example, say you did an English degree and then you wanted to be a teacher, then you would do a PGCE to convert to get your teaching qualification. Uh, or you could do a dedicated teaching degree. So here we've got uh, a degree, it could be biology, it could be police and criminal investigation, it could be forensics, it could be anything. And if you do that, then when the police forces advertise for constables on the DHEP program or detective constables now, then you will be able to, um, forgive me, sorry, press the wrong button. You will be able to apply if you're a graduate and go through the DHEP program. The police will then pay for the graduate diploma to your top up and you do that whilst working as a police constable. Uh, if you do a policing and criminal investigation degree, you apply to the police force and you still have to do the DHEP. It obviously will be easier because you'll have background knowledge, um, but at the police and criminal investigation degree is not an authorised degree by the College of Policing. And then we have the professional policing degree, which you apply to the police force and it's minimal training during a two year probation. And the reason for this is that the professional policing degree is authorised by the College of Policing. And the College of Policing is best described as a professional body and it's an independent operational arm's length from the Home Office. Uh, and as a consequence of that, we have to follow a particular curriculum because it's authorised by the College. And I'm going to explain that to you now. So thinking only at the moment about the professional policing degree, um, we have uh, an, well, two different start points really. We have a starting point at level three, a foundation degree year um, for perhaps students who didn't quite do as well as they're expecting in their uh, A-levels or their BTECs and as a consequence need to come in uh, and do a foundation year. And certainly at Staffs University, that's split into th sort of six 20 credit modules. Remember that a credit is 10 hours of study and each year at university it's 120 credits, so 1200 hours of study. And for our foundation year, it's split between the local uh, sixth form college um, and the university. So the uh, kind of split is three law based and three sociology criminology type based modules. And that's because College of Policing are certainly pushing us to a much more criminologically based approach. So we would do crime in context, the principles of English law, core legal skills, a sociology of crime, the theories of criminality, what causes criminals to behave in the way that they do, and what are the practical skills in criminal justice. Now at level four, whichever university you go and have a look at, then you should be seeing some of these types of subject areas uh, within the curriculum because the college have got one curriculum for the professional policing degree and that's applied across the course. They may order the different modules in different um, kind of areas, but in essence, the curriculum will be the same. So at level four, we're looking at core policing principles, looking about how we respond um, you know, as response officers, looking at information and intelligence and for that just um, reflect and maybe have a look when you've got time at the Sower murders and the catastrophic events that unfolded because of a breakdown in good information and intelligence sharing. Uh, and I, I used to lead the introduction to investigation uh, module where we're starting to introduce about vulnerability and fairness and about how we investigate uh, from uh, the grassroots up. And a very popular part of the course is introduction to crime and crime prevention. 
because we're then looking at the criminal criminological theories of crime and the criminological theories of crime prevention. We have academic skills because remember that we're trying to create independent learners who can work on an evidence based practice. So we move into level five. We uh, capitalize on the evidence based aspect by designing research, research projects. We move most of our modules up from introduction to professionalizing. So we're now starting to introduce the complexity of policing and the complexity of roads policing. And that doesn't just mean traffic offenses. Roads policing means denying criminals the use of the road because it's a fact that every organized criminal, every criminal at some point is using the road network as a kind of means for uh, committing their criminality. So it's a good position for the police to intervene on. And also some people will drive in a reckless and dangerous manner and endanger other people's safety. Now, vulnerability is a, a really key aspect and we're seeing that um, across a whole range and aspect of policing. You can think about the sort of fairness uh, and vulnerability that comes out of diversity. Uh, and you've seen that in the protests around Black Lives Matter. And also it's starting to come out in terms of the vulnerability that people feel through the vigil um, that's been in the news over the last few weeks. When we get into professionalising the investigation, we're looking at the legislation and the law that underpins uh, investigations such as uh, disclosure of evidence, uh, hearsay rules, uh, looking at the Police and Criminal Evidence Act and then starting to do practicals to give those practical skills about interviewing suspects and witnesses and complainants and ever more so about policing in the digital age and you can break this policing in the digital age into two ways and that's cyber enabled and cyber dependent and the differentiation is this that cyber dependent crimes can only be committed by using the technology and cyber enabled are traditional crimes such as fraud, such as grooming children, having indecent images of children, but it's done in a cyber enabled way, which means that the speed of the offending, the scale of the offending and the reach of the offending is much greater. And increasingly now the police are starting to bring their traditional um, practices and being, if you like, policing in a cyber enabled way and policing in a cyber dependent way. So some things can only be done via the technology and some traditional practices. So, for example, undercover police officers are working on the Internet. And as a consequence, we're taking our traditional methods of policing and putting them in a cyber enabled way. At level six, then you have a uh, independent project to do. And this is demonstrating your independent uh, ability to research. Remember that we want evidence based practitioners who are independent learners, who have got good competencies, who can go into the workplace and make a difference to people's lives. Uh, we support that by having a module around applied research and then our two policing modules around policing complexity. And if ever you wanted a classic example of the complex nature of policing in the 21st century, you only have to reflect upon what's happened uh, with the tragic death of Sarah Everard, uh, the vigil, the kind of difficulties the Metropolitan Police had with that, the link into the courts, the link into the politicians who'd made the law, uh, the kind of outpouring of um, kind of unhappiness about the way the police policed the vigil and there's obviously more to come with the independent review but the amount of strands that come out of that that starts from the tragic murder of an individual into the vulnerabilities and violence towards women that moves into the misogyny i.e the hatred of women and the way that that's perpetrated by uh, people on a daily basis demonstrates really the complex environment in which policing operates in the 21st century and links very neatly to the policing and society uh, module two. Now you'll be aware uh, as I've gone through that, that there's been no chances to customise your degree. And that's because the college specify exactly the material that we need to teach. So you get one option module at level six in your third year where you can start to develop and shape your degree a little bit. And this is a really important degree if you're absolutely set on being a police officer because it provides a definite career path. It gives a focus of study 
it follows the College of Policing's curriculum and it gives you the university experience. And there are many universities across the country that are doing this. Nobody has graduated from it yet because we're only just coming to the end of the second year of the professional policing or authorised pre-joined degree, you might see it advertised at, at other institutions. But this is a great degree for that. It doesn't stop you if you uh, if at the end you decide oh, I don't want to join the police now. You've still demonstrated as I've shown you the intellectual capacity uh, to gain a BSc honours which will still enable you to get jobs at graduate level in other sectors. So moving to the degree that I'm uh, leading uh, which is called the Policing and Criminal Investigation course. Now this uh, particular degree is wider than just people who want to come into the police and I gave you some examples of where our students currently go. Uh, so this is a really good degree for those people who are not sure they have an interest in law enforcement but they haven't made up their mind uh, as to exactly what they're going to do but they know they want to do something that's um, vocational but also has academic rigour. We do the same foundation level as the professional policing course and some of our students switch if they've done level three, they switch either onto forensic investigation, onto professional policing, uh, onto forensic science and, uh, and sometimes onto criminology. So the flexibility is, is really great. Now our modules um, are different because the first thing that you'll see is that there's an option module at level four, an option module at level five and two option modules at level six. So it enables you to customise your degree to the things that you're interested in. And one of the areas that we're looking to expand in around the investigative side is around inland revenue, customs and excise. Uh, and to try and and trading standards for that matter to try and uh, open up those people who want an investigative career but may not want it in the police. So at level four we're doing policing theory, you know, going all the way back to Robert Peel and the principles of policing, doing the digital investigation in the way that I was just explaining to you. But this course is much more sort of um, linked to forensics rather than criminology. So we do lots on crime scene documentation, working in the crime scene, linking uh, to forensic students, capturing evidence, packaging that evidence and making sure that we can get the exhibits and the evidence from the crime scene into the courthouse without any aspect of it being corrupted. Uh, but we do link to criminal justice and we have a new module which is going to be across the whole department which is based on case studies in criminal justice. Level five, remember that we want evidence-based practitioners that are independent. We're designing research projects. We're looking at the law in terms of law practice and procedure around the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, the kind of different offences, the different defences, you know, the eight general defences to uh, kind of committing an offence and the special defences to homicide. We're then doing a practical methods of criminal investigation, again, interviewing suspects, witnesses and, uh, and complainants. Keeping with the risk, risk and vulnerability aspect, we're certainly uh, doing that because we acknowledge that vulnerability and risk are key aspects of policing in the 21st century. And we've added a fairness in policing and this really reflects the movement around Black Lives Matter, the worry about police corruption. And again, in the um, news coverage recently about the serving police officer being charged with the, with the murder of Sarah Everard. So we think this is a really exciting programme based upon 20 credit modules, so each module is worth 200 hours of study. Level six, we're doing a project worth 400 hours of study, it's a 40 credit module. Uh, we do a case file to court where students go to the crime scene house. They are the first responders to a murder investigation. They need to secure the scene, kind of investigate that, and ultimately they um, uh, start to interview the suspect and they put the whole case to, together and then give evidence at court and are cross-examined. And similarly to the professional policing course, we're looking at policing complexity um, because we recognise that we have to elevate our thinking because of the kind of challenges of the 21st century. And um, we do this also, and one thing that you should look out for is uh, degree courses that have a placement year option because again it's another way of boosting your uh, competencies. So why choose policing and criminal investigation? Um, if you've got an interest in wider investigations it's a more flexible curriculum and it combines forensics and policing topics uh, more than um, policing and criminology topics. 
we deliver the course primarily through uh, kind of lectures, but also we do small group PDP tutorials. So your people have academic skills tutors and they meet every three weeks in small groups of less than 10 uh, and work through um, some more detailed uh, work than in the larger groups. Uh, we have immersive learning environments, trying to um, immerse students now with technology so that they can experience um, exactly how it is to, to be a responder. Uh, have industry informed research projects. One of my students was sponsored by Staffordshire Police, did a great piece of work on stop and search and whether stop and search works. Um, he analysed something like 65,000 lines of data as part of his uh, final year project. Um, and identified that the police force were operating stop and search in the wrong age band and has given that back to the force and it's sort of enabled a policy change to happen. So a really fantastic point. Uh, look out when, you, when you're deciding about what academic support time is on offer, um, because academic support time as you progress through your university career is really important for keeping you on track. And whether there are field trips, uh, placements, and how do you go about academic skills development? Because it isn't just the policing team at SAS University, there's a whole array of academic skills tutors, librarians, uh, support people in student guidance and wellbeing who are there to support and help you as you go through the um, particular degree. Uh, and also when you're going around to look at these, have a look at what other extracurricular activities are there. So are there things such as you know, these micro credentials, the sort of short, small courses offered by Microsoft where you can get new digital skills and get a certificate that proves that you've completed the course. So really important because go back to my competency value framework and remember that you need to differentiate yourself and you need to make sure that you've got the best competency evidence that you have, as well as the best degree by the time you walk out of university. So that so it brings me to the conclusion. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see the chat and we've got 10 minutes or so for questions if you want to. Um, if you want to ask me anything, so let me just get back into to this and I can stop sharing. Hopefully I'm back with you, Paul. Yep, so yeah. OK, so any any questions? Oh, let me just put the chat on. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? As I said, the uh, video will be uh, available to uh, to watch later on. And if there are any questions that crop up later, or maybe you're not confident about asking a question now, you can send them to me in the careers team and we'll forward them on uh, to Ian, uh, if that's what you prefer to do. I'm also happy if you want to give them my email address, Paul, and they can email me directly and I'll answer it that way, whichever's uh, better for them. That's great. Then we can do that also. So there doesn't seem to be any questions cropping up. So, uh, so yes, as I said, the video will be available later on. And if any of the questions do crop up in the meantime, then uh, forward them on to me and I'll also uh, share Ian's oh. email address with you. So somebody is typing, uh, oh, Matilda. Okay. Nothing is cropping up at the moment. Oh, no, they've stopped. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Uh, well, thank you ever so much, Ian. That was uh, incredibly uh, insightful and uh, yeah, really, really useful. Thank you ever so much. OK, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck, everyone, with the rest of your term and uh, hope you get the grades that you want. Thank you. Thank you ever okay. so much. Thanks, Matilda. Bye bye. Bye now. Bye.